The question I get asked frequently is how to get your hat shaped like that. Now there's plenty of resources out there for shaping a hat, but not really for cosplay or costume or impression or reenacting. So I thought I'd make this video and cover a couple of things. So there's two elements, and that's warmth and moisture. And what I like to call, uh, there's artificial and natural. So wearing a hat out for a long period of time, over years, and it wearing a certain way would be natural. Artificial would be what we're gonna do is try to get it wet and shape it the way we want. So this is my Marine Corps boonie, which I have kind of shaped like Captain Price. And this happened because I had washed this cover in warm water, rinse it in cold water, and then wear it out, and I'd get this sag going on. Then I would also be driving my truck and I'd push the back of the boonie up, and this kind of gets that Captain Price shape going on, except for the, the tops domed rather than flat. So I had to reinforce uh, Captain Price's boonie, which is solid all throughout. For my Recondo G.I. Joe, I went with uh, an Australian Akubra slouch hat, which when you get these brand new, the brim's totally flat like a like an army campaign cover from the early 1900s, uh, drill instructor cover, as you would know it as. And as you can see, that brim is not flat. I got a bit of a curvature going on here. So by wearing it and working this with a bit of warmth, I was able to get that shape going on. But then also, I went to Hawaii with the Marines for a little over a month, and I took this with me to wear it out in Hawaii to help get it shaped. And I had a couple weekend, couple uh, weekday evenings off, and we had one part of a weekend off, and I wore this, and it rained every day. So I was able to wear this in the rain, and the rainwater got on the brim, and it got heavy, and the rain in Hawaii's fairly warm, so that you had to get your warmth and your moisture, and I was able to sag the brim, and I'd wear it as it would dry, or I would somehow stuff something up and hold this while it dried, or stick a peg out and have it dry while it's, while it's hanging in order to try to, to shape it how I want to. And I basically got the perfect shape that I want in roughly one trip, maybe maybe two days of real wear in Hawaii got the shape that I wanted other than trying to shape the crown here and getting that shape just right. Now for my Theodore Roosevelt uniform and impression, uh, recreation of the 1898 campaign cover uh, is made by a vintage Stetson and I had a guy rework it and he put the snowflake hole in it, redid the stitching. Uh, this is my original Rough Rider uh, insignia piece. Uh, this has seen better days. It's got a lot of dry rot. I put some foam reinforcement in here trying to get the shape just right. And I wore this in the rain doing chores in the backyard. Whenever it rained, whenever I had time off, and it was the weekend off or an evening and it was raining, I'm in the backyard wearing this, uh, pulling weeds, picking up rotten fruit, cleaning up after the dog. And the me doing a physical chore not enough to break a sweat because you don't want sweat stains, but enough to burn calories, raise your body heat, to get the heat into the hat, it's bleeding out of your head, and the rainwater coming down, getting it wet, there you got your heat and you got your moisture, it's enough to sag the brim, sag the top, and I can kind of push these in and get that little crown worked. And then I could bring it inside and let it dry and I'll be setting it up with boards to try to work that brim to curl it up and get the curl in here going on by working it and having it set on a board and trying to prop it up just right, hanging it on, like, and on the end of a hockey stick to kind of get it stretched. Because from uh, the beginning of the war to the end of war in Cuba, Theodore Roosevelt's cover got worse and worse progressively and I'm trying to recreate, not towards the end, maybe like the middle end of how bad his hat got during that whole thing. And I think I got it pretty square on. But when it came to working the Captain Price cover, I had a couple uh, little hiccups to try to work around. So I took a bucket, sliced it up into thirds, uh, angled it, hot glued it. I came up with this uh, cheap contraption. I think I'll make a better one out of wood later now that I kind of got the, the shape down. So I'm able to put this on here 
clamp it down and let it sit outside in the sun, spray it down with water and get it wet. So that's, I made another video, but that's, that's how I cut that thing up, try to get the shape. And on the inside, I saved a piece of plastic to hold the edge of the hat up and I sewed some heavy duty canvas in here to try to get that flat top going on. So I set that up and I spray that with water. Let that sit in the summer sun, come back, stretch it, pull it down a little harder, reclamp it again, spray it again a little more. And that's how I work this. Now it's important that you don't use hard water because much like a, if you sweat in your hat, you get a sweat stain that looks funky. If you spray it with hard water, you'll get hard water stains. So you want to use filtered water. And if you don't have filtered water, you don't have access to filtered water, another trick is going to Starbucks. They filter their water five times because if they didn't and they used hard water making their coffee, it would chemically react between the acids and the base and other minerals in the coffee and it would, you would taste it and it would taste funky. So they have to filter their water to make their coffee taste better. So water at Starbucks is free and that's a nice trick to <laughs> use that water to shape your hat. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask, drop it in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them.